Michael, what's up, man? Hello, brother. Good to be with you, friend. Yeah, I'm so glad. Thank you so much for joining us for this. You bet. From Chicago land, right? I'm from Chicago, and you're down in Tennessee, right? Tennessee. Well, I'm from D.C., another big city, but I live in Nashville now. Okay. I uh, I make it down to Nashville probably once a quarter just for uh, different meetings for work, and I love I love Tennessee. Great spot. I'll, I'll probably go go to heaven from here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like it a lot. Yep. So, Michael, a lot of people uh, who have been in Christian music, you know, include like me, even I'm thinking back when I was a teenager, like I knew you from DC Talk. I mean, I remember my mom dragging me to, a, you know, acquire the fire events. I remember going to one in Detroit one time and uh, leaving there changed, man. It was awesome. Like you had such an instrumental, huge part in the lives of so many, so many people. And it's just incredible. I'm, I'm honored to be able to speak with you. And then since DC Talk, now you're with Newsboys, and we're gonna talk about that. I'm curious, just give us a glimpse of Michael Tate. Like, how did you get started writing and releasing music? Well, I went to college, That's, I wanted to go into politics. I was at Liberty with Toby Mac and Kevin Max, where we uh, kind of launched DC Talk. And I wanted to go into politics, man. I wanted to be like a governor or a senator, or maybe the first black Republican president, who knows? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> down the road, but that's all we want, what I wanted to get into. And uh, I just started singing, you know, I was singing in my dad's church and singing music on the weekends at churches. And uh, I would go out, Toby and I would go out together. He'd um, run sound for me. My manager back then, supposedly yeah. years ago, we were just kids. Yeah. Silly. But, but, we kind of, but we kind of stumbled to this thing. And then we realized, wait, we have talent. Let's write music. You know, let's write our own songs and make it, you know, make it, make, make it a, a yeah. complete thing. So, one thing that you know to me, it's, it's a very humble beginning. Some of the earlier songs in my career yeah. period were tough, you know, <laughs> hard to, <laughs> look at I'm like, ah, but you have to have those growing moments, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but God knew what he was doing because um, it's lasted with, in a few decades now and we're still doing it. Yeah, it's amazing. I actually did a DC Talk binge recently, oh boy. about a month ago, and I had not listened really to the Free At Last record. That's my favorite, one of my favorite records. That's my favorite one that I listened to. I've listened to all of them now in the past month. What's your what's the song? Oh man, the first when it hits that first one, boom! Dun, dun, what's it called? Um, I'm pulling it up. Right dun, 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 dun. Yes, love. Oh, tell my. me, haven't you heard? Love is a serious word. Hey. Yes. Yeah. When that hits, man, the mix and everything is just so good. It slams, dude. Um, One of my favorite still from that record is um. Silence is golden, but these are the words that the world needs yeah. to hear. Say the words, say the words. Yeah. Say I love, love. you. Sing it, Matt. <laughs> yeah, man. I liked also socially acceptable. Oh, I love that verse. Oh. verse. Uh, what you thinking, doing the things you do? Whose opinion are you listening to? Just oh, man. To yeah, those are those some good songs, good times, man. Some people gotta learn the hard way. Oh, I'm trying to take my I'm trying to take my job, Matt. What are you doing, man? That is such a good album. But um, it's one. It's an album that I had listened to. I think it was like before. I was like probably six, seven years old when that yeah. came out. So I hadn't Easy. listened to it. Easy. And so good, so good. But Thanks, so, how did you get into the Newsboys? How did that start? Well, this is really funny because I say God works in mysterious ways and mischievous ways because <laughs> I, along with Toby and Kevin, were, you know, newsboys these start back in the day, like the Stones and the Beatles, respectively speaking. And uh, yeah. we, were, we were we were frenemies, you know, we did our thing and did their thing. But yeah. about, I guess, about 12 years, 13 years ago now, I got a call from Wes Campbell, the manager said, hey, Peter wants to take a break. Will you come in and step in for a while? Well, that while was meant to be all these years later because yeah. Peter really taking a, 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 a leave because he was worn out 20 plus years of writing records and touring. It just burns you out, Matt, sometimes, you know? So he was all yeah. good and fine. He's one more time with his family, wife. So he he took off and I came in and um, I would have never saw this one coming, buddy. Not in a million years. Wow. I When I think about the Newsboys, I remember being on the playground in like sixth grade. Wow. And at that time, the big song was the uh, They Don't Serve Breakfast in Hell song. Yep, yep, yep. That's crazy. Do you guys ever play that still? We we do it in our acoustic set, just like with yeah. a throwback. We yeah. do that when we do um 
Oh, what do we do, Dave? We do uh, Holy, Holy is His Name Almighty. Do that one. Yeah. We do uh, Angels. Entertaining Angels. We do Shine in that set. Yeah. It's all in the, yeah. all in the middle park. It's, you know, old school set. Entertaining Angels. I forgot about that. That was a good one, too. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. One to another. Yeah. Entertaining, Entertaining Angels by the light of my TV screen 24 7. You wait for me. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I mean, just that you've been a part of DC Talk and Newsboys, those are like the two biggest, most influential Christian bands ever. It's well, amazing. Some might argue that point, but I'm with you. I'm, I agree with you. <laughs> it's it's amazing. So um, you guys have had, a, you know, I think blending those two together, you guys have had such a huge impact on Christian music over the past 30 years. What's it like to be a part of a band that's been around for so long? Members have changed so many songs so many albums like what's what's that like i feel like we're just conduits and catalysts uh um blessed carriers if you will of this musical message and the members have changed but the message stays the same Matt. all these mm -hmm. years later you know it's like i love the fact that i get to be a part of a legend band legend group and um and keep them keep the music alive because yeah. the, 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 they always say we'll pass away so most of you will we'll, we'll, Leave the band maybe one day, or we'll we'll pass and go to heaven one day. But the songs yeah. live on, so we're just carriers of the good news, and, and yeah. it's it's an honor to be that. Yeah, it's good. So you've been doing it for a long time. How have you seen Christian music and worship music change over the years? Oh. What would you say is like the biggest thing that you've seen change? Probably the fact of of, of when you listen to, to Christian radio today, um, most songs are vertical. Not so much horizontal. DC Talk is pretty horizontal. And we were vertical, but you know, we were social conscious lyrics. Now everything's kind of leaned towards, pretty heavy lean on worship. And that took me by a bit of a, a, a surprise because I'm not a worship writer as such. I like, I mean, I, mean, I think my life is worship, you know, how you treat people yeah. is worship, how you love your family's worship. But it's tough sometimes when you um, are used to being a pop writer. So if you listen yeah. to most songs I write, they, they kind of lean on the pop side. Yeah. We'll still honor God, talk about God, all that stuff. But I like to kind of keep both. I like to, when the verticals in place, the horizontal works great too. So keep yeah. both. You know? Yeah. Do but you I get think, asked I, to leave that? But I think with the music has changed quite a bit, and it's great. It's because that's where people are right now. Yeah. Do you get asked to lead worship? Um, not so much. I mean, no, not in a traditional sense. Like everybody rise, let's sing. Yeah. What a fruit we have in Jesus. <laughs> not that yeah. so much. Yeah. But I definitely, uh, I mean, I, I, I've got to, I got to do worship sets. And I might, you yeah. know, throw it in the light, but DC Talk and My yeah. Will and, uh, yeah. of course, Newsboy songs, but not just the worship as we know it today from Caleb. Right yeah, now. right, right. So you guys, tell us about your, tell us about the new single you got, He Lives Out. It's, yeah. it's more of a congregational worship song than some it really of is. Music, So yes. tell us about that song. We do some songs sometimes that we don't write because we, we try to chase the art, try to chase what's working, what people want to hear. So yeah. one of my favorite things we do in Newsboys is we take songs that have been put out or just newly released and put our spin on it. We Newsboyize it, as I say. And um, he lives in one of those songs uh, that just, I think my manager Dave bought it to us, Dave Wagner. And uh, I heard of the church and we were like, man, this is fantastic. And what a powerful message for Easter. Yeah, for the very fact that we know our God's not dead because He yeah. lives, you know, mm -hmm. so it's just exactly what we talk about. It's a part, and people. And the thing is, people at our concert are also churchgoers, so they all know the song. So, it's, so that's another familiar factor musically in, in the show. Yeah, right. Love it. It's a, it's a very strong song. Yeah, it reminded me of like when you guys did "God's Not Dead." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tasty's kind of put your own spin on it. Yeah. So, how do you guys continue to keep things fresh in songwriting and touring? Because I can imagine that gets I would think it gets gets old after singing that song so many times, or like everything else, bro. I mean, I do believe the old cliche that uh, if a man enjoys his occupation, he'll work a day in his life. That's true because we yeah. get road weary, we get tired, we get delayed flights. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of responsibilities at you know, times, but still, it's such a beautiful thing to do what you love to do. Yeah, uh, and it doesn't seem like work, but the, the reason we keep it fresh and keep it fun is because we enjoy it. We didn't enjoy it, Matt McCoy. I'd be long gone, buddy boy. I'd be like, <laughs> I got three words for you. Instinct wrote a song about it. Bye bye bye. I'd be yeah. gone. But yeah. I enjoy it. I love it. 
and it's yeah. and it's, it's, it's um I feel alive when I do this. Yeah, and God giving us this music and giving us this platform, so who's going to use it? What was the pandemic like for you when when you weren't touring? Because I can imagine if you're hell, you, hell know, on you earth. love doing it, hell on earth. I hated it, man. I was miserable. Yeah. Just a people lover, you know. Toby told me. Toby called me like a month into the pandemic. He says, "Tate, you're gonna have a rough time, buddy." I said, "Why?" He says, "Because you can't touch people. You can't hug them. You can't be because I'm, I'm that kind of person, you know." Yeah. So long story boring. Uh, it was it was good since we we got to write the stand record, which is my probably my favorite record that I've done with those boys. Yeah, and uh, that was a great time to make that record. We had, we had two years to go back in and rework lyrics, melodies, choruses, se- musical sections, and. Um, Usually on the, the kind of time when, you, when you're touring, you, you offer a few months, Matt, you might get a few songs in, then you go yep. for you know, a month of touring, you come back and write another thing. So it's hard to have yeah. that kind of dedicated time. So I had time on my hands. So yeah. that was good. Do you typically write only with co-writes or do you ever do just writing on your own? I, 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 can, I usually start a song and I'll probably finish it with a co-write. Yeah. I've been, yeah. A few songs were like that they're really hard, uh, hard thought for me and hard deep for me that I've, I've, I've uh, written myself, but I prefer other perspectives too, because I feel like, you know, yeah. like minds with yeah. talent, keywords right. with talent <laughs> can make something special happen. Yeah, right. Perspective. So here's a question for you. If you were sitting down with, you know, a 15 year old, 16 year old kid that's just getting started, or maybe you could go back and give yourself a younger version of yourself some advice or a young, new, you know, worship leader or musician, what advice would you give? Ooh. Well, I would, I would say what my dad said to my sister and I years ago. If you don't mean it, don't sing it. Mm. And with that charge, I would also say, uh, pray over your music. I mean, we, we pray over writing sessions. We pray hard over like direction and, and lyrics and, impact and I think all of it's important. The melody is important. The music is important. The lyric is important. And they all gotta be slapping and slamming and, mm-hmm. and firing to, to, to hit, you know, you know, like God's not there to obviously have that, that the lyric, yeah. the melody, and at the track. We believe yeah. another idea. You know, those songs, you know, born again, those songs have impact because all three walls came together and met. So if you're writing songs, think about people that they're gonna be sung to, especially as a worship leader, you know? masses of people what can they relate to what can you say how can you essentially Matt, Matt, say the same thing over again and again and again because it's, you know it's, yeah. it's the same message it's the way we share yeah. this yeah just saying it a little bit differently That's right yeah be asking god for diligence and for creativity yeah. and i say the closer we get to the creator the more creative we should be and yeah. uh, that's always a goal too so you know if you draw near to god he gives you ideas that can only yeah. come from the most creative mind in the world his yeah. mind what, to, what, I'm just curious, like what inspires you the most? You know, is it going out for a run? Is it nature? Is it art? Is it listening to other music? People. People. Relationships and people. Because I'm such a lover of people and I care for um, the hurting. And uh, I don't know, I just, I just, I just ache a lot for people that are unhappy. Mm. And there's no joy, there's no spark. And some are Christians, still aren't, you know? It breaks my heart. Yeah. Uh, I talked to a family member a couple of days ago and he says, I'm because Mike, he says, I'm not happy. He goes, I'm miserable. And this, and this, this is closer to him. It broke my heart. I thought, well, what he goes, I don't know what it is. I'm just, I just can't find my center. You know, I'm like, ah. and, he, and I gave him all the, you know, the cliche, but true, cliche, but true things, Matt, about how you know, get back into it. He's like, I know I tried all that, but it's not working. So yeah. uh, they, he, a lot of people, and he's a Christian guy. But a lot yeah. of people are away, man. A lot of people are hurting and aching and, and, and lost within their circumstances, you know? So yeah, that that is that's a serious thing. But for me, um the joy of the Lord and his creation is my strength. Yeah, yeah. That's good, man. You're right. There are a lot of hurting people out there. And I think the pandemic too, Matt, brought that out a lot. The pandemic made things really, really tough for people. And uh, of course, it brought to the surface, you know, race relations again, yeah, uh, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, yeah, uh, family abuse, you know, kids and yeah. domestic stuff. So it's tough, man. We're living, I believe we're living in the last days, but we're also living in a time where it's exciting yeah. because you can pray and have faith and watch God work. Because these mm-hmm. people, are, like, of course, my family members, I'm like, 
I wish I could just bring, give him a happy pill, but he can't do that. Yeah, he has right. To, you know, he has to find it himself. But at the same time, I also get to press in and pray for him yeah. to see what God does. You know? Yeah. My like, God, do it, Lord. So come on, Jesus. Step, step to the plate. Let's do it. Yeah, and it's spending time with people, hearing yeah. stories. I was reading a book about um, John Wimber starting the Vineyard Church. Yeah. And it was talking about how, like, you know, they were going to these churches and someone came to him and he's like, hey, like, when are we going to do like the Jesus stuff? And he's like, well, what do you mean? Like, you know, like, when are we going to do the stuff that Jesus did? Like, he's like, and, and a lot of times, you know, churches, we're kind of just stuck in this, like, you know, we do the service and yeah. listen to the sermon, do the songs, but we're not actually doing the Jesus stuff. And I think that now more than ever, churches are having to rise up and do the Jesus stuff, like yeah. actually have spending time with people and building yeah. relationship and hearing stories. And that's how my dad was, when we were kids. My dad was the pastor of church in DC. And now he, we had a Wednesday night prayer and Bible study, Friday night uh, um, visitation, Saturday mm -hmm. knock on the doors, you know? Yeah. And uh, invite people out to the church. That's, it seems so old school now to go, go knock on the door, door to door and go, hey, how you doing? I'm Michael Tate, I'm a part of Bible Baptist Church. I'm Tell you about Jesus, you got a couple of minutes? My dad would yeah. do that every day, man. I mean, every weekend. It was yeah. crazy. I'd go with wow. him. I'm like, what are you doing, dad? You know? It was crazy. Yeah. That. Right. But we are entering, a, I think, a season where people are are going to really want that and craving that. Just real yeah. connection. And I bet you there are people at home right now, and we talk about people who are hurt and lonely, that would love for someone to come knock on their door and say, hey. Uh, you know, I know you want to know Jesus, you know, or what, just in Arizona, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? But, but, but they're not going to come out and ask for it. Right. Right. Um, they would love it. Yeah. They would love it. I believe it. I believe. Yeah. I'm with you. So give us a little glimpse. I'm just very curious. Give us a glimpse of like what a normal week or a normal day looks like for Michael Tate. Well, usually we come home. Well, I'll start with the, with the, with the tour. We usually leave on Wednesday nights to go to our first city of the four day run, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Okay. So we leave on our bus, say we go to Chicago, eight hour trip to Chicago, wake up the next morning, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, we'll be in Chicago on the bus at the venue or the hotel. And I get up, have some breakfast, look at my phone, get in the word a bit, sometimes vice versa, word in the phone, but some of the phone gets me first and sucks me away, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and then I'll work out with the band. Jeff Frankenstein, our keyboard, our band director, we, he has, we do a workout every day. Uh, just kind of cardiovascular stuff. and yeah, Isometrics and things. things. Yep. And then yep. we'll do that. And then we'll do a sound check. Then I'll probably take a nap, read a bit more, have dinner, then a meet and greet for the show, shaking hands yep. with some babies, blah, blah, blah. Then the two-hour show. 28 songs, Matt. 28 songs, count them. Wow. Yes. Wild. Uh, yeah. Two hour show. Then after it's over with, we do another meet and greet with those people who sponsored kids, uh, which is our ministry we have with Child Fun. And we'll do that. And um, worn out, days over, get back on the bus, listen to music, eat some junk food, <laughs> not too much, <laughs> but eat the sushi or pizza. Sushi's my yep. favorite. And, uh, Head down to the, to the next place on Friday yeah. night. On Friday, on Friday and Saturday, and then Monday morning we come home tired, crusty eyes, baggage in our eyes. Walk in the house. Monday is like my Saturday because you know I'm back home from the weekend. Yeah. And then uh, Tuesday I'm gonna try to get some things done. I leave again on Wednesday. Do it's it again. Yeah. 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 Twenty five plus years doing that, man. It's crazy. It's a dream, but you love it. I love it. It's good, man. And you're and you're anointed and gifted at it. Well, thank so you, sir. You gotta do it. Yeah. Like right. It, do you guys use tracks? Uh when we play it put it this way, we play a song. Uh like to a click? Like to do some magnetic. Click for sure, yeah. And like the horns will be on track, yeah. So I want all the sounds there, you know? Yeah. We got tons of keys live, two guitars live, bass, yep. drums, but there's always a little bit more you want. You know, I want I want the whole kitchen sink. Yeah, so yeah. I'll probably put like, you know, a little a BGV vocal on, this, on a track over here because yeah. I want my voice to be heard the way it was in the record. Yeah. You know? yeah. Not seeing the lead part, of course. And yeah, whatever, whatever it takes because, to make the live experience amazing. Do the tracks typically have guide cues in them? Like verse, two, three, four. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. 
Because you guys know them. Oh, like yeah. The, yeah, yeah. You're not like the church musicians who show up and you're like, what song are we playing? Two, three, four. Love so bold. You know, no, <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't remember where, where I'm going, Matt. You, yeah, you, you that's good. The song myself, obviously, or if I did cover the song, I know it's a wall that I don't have to worry about that stuff. Yeah, that's why you're the professional. Yeah. yeah. Good, then. So, all right, last question. What's what's next for Newsboys? I mean, you guys are doing a tour. What's happening well, right now? We are working on, uh, we're doing summer dates and we're working on a brand new record right now, which I'm excited about, piece by piece. It'll be done when it's done. But uh, we just added Adam Agee to our band lineup. He's in the band now, speaking of changing faces and yeah. new band members. He was the lead singer of a band called um, Stella Cart back in the day. And then he did audio drilling for a while. But, uh, kind of recruited him for the band. He plays great, sings great. We write, we're writing together for this new record. So we're doing that a lot this summer and just to spend time with our families, loving people, man. And then in the fall, hitting the road with this new tour and uh, not sure who we're bringing out yet. Maybe it's just Newsboys. We did Newsboys in the, in the spring by ourselves because the show is, we have enough stuff to where we can do it and there's no need for other bands. But yeah, we'll see what happens. You gotta come on, you gotta come and see a show, Matt. I'd love to. I'm going to look at the tour dates and see. Yeah, do that, man. Have you guys been through Chicago yet? Uh, yes. We have. Dave, we're going to go to Chicago again. You know what I'm saying? You know, my manager over there. He doesn't know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Keep, 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 keep looking out. You'll see it somewhere. I'll look it up and see see if I can make it out. Man, thanks yeah. so much for taking the time for this. It was great meeting you. and. Uh, you want, brother? It was fun reminiscing, too, on a, some of those free at last I, I songs. I was all. thinking... I love how you're such a fan of both bands. Makes me happy, dude. Oh, people man. Like, I love talking to you because you guys, like, you enjoyed it. You love it. Oh, yeah. I actually remember my brother having um, one of those songs on a cassette that I think it was like a mixtape cassette that he made. And it was the uh, Lean on Me yeah, When yeah. You Are Not Strong. I'll Be Your Friend. Yep. Never I'll well. help you <laughs> carry, carry on. on. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, Michael, thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for everything you've done over decades. The seeds thanks, you've bro. sown, I'm telling you, there are a lot of people like me who, I mean, I've been in Christian music now since I was a teenager and it, I was highly, highly influenced by you guys. And thank you because it's thank really you. changed my life and it's gonna impact generations too to come from that, so. You're right, that's the goal, that's the prayer. Man. You're doing really good work. So it was great meeting you, and thanks for taking the time. Thanks, brother. See you at the show. Yep, see ya. Bye-bye.